guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for another one of our mass making sessions. And what I thought we could do today is mass make some um, envelopes with kind of long flaps. Um, I saw a picture on Instagram. Now I'm pretty sure that it was Wendy from Wendy's Journal Adventure. I'm a bit rubbish with Instagram. So, you know, I don't necessarily even know whether I follow her on there or even if she's on there. I'm sure that the name was Wendy's Journal Adventure, which I assume is her. Um, however, I don't feel like I've seen her do a video of those envelopes. So either I've missed the video. I did have a quick skim through her more recent videos. I couldn't seem to see anything. Or she perhaps didn't do a video of them. Um, so therefore, obviously I don't have the correct method, correct in inverted commas, you know, if there is a com correct sort of method, I mean, she probably has a very slick and efficient way of doing it. I'm just going to cobble together some in my own little way. Um, and of course, you know, you must do yours as you find easiest for you. Um, so if we get kind of cracking into them, I've got here a bunch of supplies with me. So I've got some vintage sheet music I've got this is I think the only kind of scrap of 12 by 12 paper the rest are full sheets that I have been hoarding for one reason or another either I like one side and not the other or maybe I just haven't really known how to use them um, but I've just bought along a whole bunch there I've just got a 12 by uh, a normal A4 sheet there. This was a kind of misprint while I was playing around creating some printables and this is not going to be the finished article um, mainly because of this piece here so I will try and use that up and then I've brought along um, some coffee dyed pages and I've also got some more down to the side of me in different weights and thicknesses so you know I've got a few different things that I can use. So let's pop some of these bits to the side and we'll get started kind of making some. As I say, I haven't really ever made these before, although I did try and make one in my festive frolics journal, um, but I probably didn't make it in the best way. So I'm going to try and make some now. Um, and again, you know, my method might evolve over the process of this video. So, you know, we'll hopefully be learning together. So all I'm going to do is take my 12 by 12 and trim it down to, you know, a much slimmer size. Let me just check how my frame is looking. So if I'm like right at the edge, I think you can kind of still see me, hopefully. So I'm just going to cut this down along the entire length. And, you know, I might not use the entire length. I might have to then cut the length down obviously this is very much trial and error because I haven't really made these before so I'm just going to trim off the white you know header piece from where it's been joined into the 12 by 12 pad now this is obviously as you can see double-sided um, you know scrapbook paper so I rather like the dots so I want them on my outside of my envelope now what I'm going to do so fold that piece up. Now that's going to be my, my pocket for my envelope. And then what I want to do is have like a long flap. Not right to the bottom. So what I will do is trim that down to say here. Like that. Oh gosh, I made a really hideous job of flat cutting. My God. Right. So that's my flap and it's, you know, a long, long envelope. So, you know, not rocket science, really simple, really easy thing, but just gives you another little different thing to put in your journals. And that's what it's all about really, isn't it? Having a lot of different pieces that we can eventually kind of use, um, you know, so that our pages kind of look you know, pretty different. So I'm just going to glue this down, obviously again, and I know I just repeat myself every week, so I do apologise. Of course, if you've got your sewing machine handy, you can stitch this down. And that, you know, would look much nicer. Well, to be fair, I don't think it would necessarily look much nicer, but it would look equally good. It would be a different look. Um, you know, but equally, if you don't have a sewing machine to hand or you don't have a sewing machine at all, I think gluing is perfectly fine too. 
So that's my little envelope. And then at this point, obviously I can just trim this up a little bit just here at the side where it was kind of overhanging. And then you can obviously round your corners of your flap. You can round the corners of your, you know, the actual envelope piece itself if you want. So I might do some with rounded corners, some with squared off corners. Again, like with all these mass makes, this probably doesn't look any great shakes at the moment. But obviously once you've decorated it, I mean, I've got this skinny piece of lace here just hanging around from something else. I've got these ladies here hanging around from something else. You know, with not very much effort, this really could go to look in something really quite pretty. We're just making the foundation pieces. Um, so I just want to kind of emphasize that for anybody just joining for like the first time. I myself like to keep my mass makes plain so that when I grab them in, I can then decorate them. But of course, if you like to decorate your pieces up, you know, per thing, um, then feel free to do that. So I'm just going to move that piece of paper to the side and then grab in my next sheet. So now this was from some, from some paper from um, K and Company. Well, actually, both of these, I think, were K and Company. Very different styles, I realise. And this was from their scrap pads to go. I, th I know that I've mentioned those before. Actually, I'm just thinking I'm not going to cut that there. I'm going to cut it down here. From their pads called Scrap Pads to Go. And um, I bought a few of those over time. They were just the most awesome pads because they had all these billions of fussy cuts. I think they had about, well... I can't remember, maybe 48 sheets or something. So maybe like 40 of the sheets were patterned paper and then the other bits were, um, what's the word, you know, fussy cuts and things like that. But they were just so brilliant. And, um, you know, I don't think they must do them anymore because I only saw a handful of designs and then I never really saw them again. But this one was a baby girl one. Um, you know, hence the sort of pastel-y colours, but I love the gingham. Not so fussed about this side, but I really do love the gingham. So I just thought I would make one of those long envelopes showcasing the gingham, which looks really nice then. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this down slightly further so it's less square. And also because I'm not that keen on this inside strip. So I'll just try and, you know, I trim that down enough to get rid of quite a lot of that and then it's not really that noticeable on that piece. All the pink's gone now, it's just a white strip and that, you know, that doesn't worry me at all. And then again, you can obviously adjust this, you could obviously trim that slightly less if you wanted. You can put a thumb hole in your little envelope flap so excuse my my head here but oops just moved that across by accident so we'll just have a little thumb hole I don't know whether I've actually got that very center centered along there it's because obviously when you try and keep your head out of it but obviously you know looking as closely as you can but trying to keep your head out it actually proves quite difficult to see what you're doing <clears throat> right, let me just unclog my glue a bit. I did do this before I started filming, would you believe? But it seems to have just, um, you know, clogged back up already. So there we go. So, you know, you can play around with these. You can have some with thumb holes, some without thumb holes, some with rounded corners, some without. Just have a bit of fun and just do them exactly as you want. But they're just something else. A little bit different for in your journals and that's what it's all about isn't it really it's just having a variety of things so that's that one just, and then I'm just going to round the corners and you know as usual if you're joining me for the first time and you think oh this is so dull um, I will just talk you through like the first say you know three or four that we make and then I'll be quiet because, of course, you don't need me telling you 
every single time that we make one. Um, but I think it's helpful for, us, for the first few. So this is just an A4 sheet. So A4 in this country, well, not in this country, A4 is 8.25 inches by 11.69 inches. So I think in America you have something slightly different, but not vastly different. So I'm sure that yours is, you know, pretty similar-ish. And again, I'm just going to fold that flap up and then fold this one down like that. And again, you've got that nice sort of envelope there. So, you know, because we've made envelopes before in this series, I think we've made actually a few different types of envelopes. And this, I guess, is just yet another different type of envelope. So, you know, all good fun. And I just think always nice to have a variety of different types of things. So this one, for instance, if I just show you how it would look with the rounded off, sorry, got something stuck there. How it would show, I'll show you how it would look with the rounded corners. <clears throat> so we take that on, there, and there. And actually that's another, another look that you could have, is just rounded at the top and not at the bottom. So, I mean, you really can vary your appearance by all your little pieces that you're, you know, that you're making by just the subtlest things, if that makes sense. So I might just leave that one like that with these bottom edges not rounded because I think that looks really quite nice. So that's that one. So I might just take in now my, my sort of misprinted piece and I'm just going to trim it down probably this side I think so just going to trim it along here and again you know I mean I don't measure at all so just tailor these to the size paper that you've got if you've got a smaller piece of paper just make them narrower and they would be shorter and then there'll be a small one. So in fact, I could demonstrate that in a minute with a smaller piece of paper. So, you know, there's no rules here. Just wondering whether we want that as the flap or this as the flap. So I think we'll have it like this. So again, just then fold that piece up. Just glue that down. That side as well. And then make our flap like that. Okay. So it looks really cute. And then, you know, if it's not quite right here, for instance, you know, you can just trim that off by just turning it over and obviously seeing the back of there. Just trim that down. Okay. And again, you know, once these are inked up and things, that also is going to change the appearance of them. You know, even if you didn't decorate them at all, just by inking them, they're going to look a whole different sort of appearance. So that one, and I could round the, the bottoms. And I could leave the top squared off. So, you know, we've got different options that we can use. Okay, so I've probably talked you through enough. I'll just do one, actually, just before I shut up about what we're doing. I'll just do one with a small piece. I mean, this is probably a bit too ludicrously small, to be honest. I mean, when I said small, I obviously... I obviously wasn't meaning quite that small. But let me just see what I've got laying around that I could pull in. Um, I mean, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on my desk, but I'm not going to have anything obviously suitable. Well, I've got this piece here. So let's have a look at this one. So for instance, yeah, well, just to demonstrate, in fact, that point. So this one here, obviously, this is an offcut of some eight by eight scrapbook paper. If I just cut that piece off, and if I just show you, you know, what I'm meaning here. So you could um, fold this piece up here. 
like that. And you could actually have your longish flap here like that and you could you know that's like a sort of um like a dumpy fat one you know that's kind of do you see what I mean it reminds me a little bit of like a clutch handbag <laughs> which I think that's quite nice actually I mean initially I was going to trim this down to make it a slimline one but actually I quite like it like that I think so I might just might just leave that one in that sort of shape so again I'm just going to glue this in but I mean really the point here is just to demonstrate that you know use whatever you have and make them whatever size that you fancy they don't have to be an entire length of 12 by 12 paper they don't have to be an entire length of A4 paper this was just a little off cut of 8 by 8 but that's perfectly usable now in a journal so I'm just going to trim it down at the edges and there, just trim it down slightly more here. And then I can just round my corners. And again, you don't have to round the corners of your flap. You know, you may like to use one of those edge punches or an edge, um, you know, die cut funny thing. You know, you can get all different things going with your um, edges is I suppose what I'm trying to say there. Um, but yeah, I think that's really cute, to be honest, just like that. And of course, you know, once that was decorated up, it would look really, really nice in your journal. So please don't feel that you're restricted to having a very long piece of paper. You're really not. And again, as I say, you could have trimmed this down and had it like half that size, really. And that would be equally cute. So... Don't be restricted, you know, by the size paper that you've got. So I'm just going to crack on now and continue with my sheets exactly as we have been doing. But I'm going to stop rabbiting about the process. Just checking the time and that I'm still in frame. I'm going to stop rabbiting about the process because obviously, you know, <laughs> we've done it now. So you, you know, have seen what we're doing. So I'm just going to trim mine down like this. So I hope that everybody's having a good day. I have so appreciated everyone's support this year. Um, you know, with the mass making, with the alphabet challenge, with my channel generally and um, my shop and things. Really, really appreciate everybody's wonderful support. I mean, I really just feel, uh, well, just um, <laughs> overwhelmed sometimes by the kindness shown by people. It's just incredible. So. Yeah, thank you so much. And talking of kindness, I must tell you this loveliest story that happened the other day. In fact, unfortunately, I had meant to tell you about this and I've forgotten to bring the um, card itself, but I'll, I'll just tell you anyway. So we were out for a walk at the weekend and um, it was, you know, just a walk. Actually, it was by the... Um, by the water by the sea and you kind of come along from like the well along the side of the coast anyway and um you end up in a sort of harbour type area so it goes from being quite um cut off into like a very little sort of harbour um you know with a few houses and things like that so we were walking around there and my middle son and I were walking you know miles ahead of my husband and my daughter who were just trailing behind really slow um, and actually my mum had also joined us for the walk which was really nice too so she was you know also trailing along behind with them um, and we always have like a little agreement where everyone does the walk at their own pace so if you want to walk super slowly that's fine if you want to walk a bit faster that's fine and then you know whoever's up front they just stop every sort of you know either at a bench or every like I don't know 15 minutes or something like that and wait for the others to catch up and then kind of you know we all take the walk again so we were doing that and so I was obviously with my my middle son and um my oldest son was at work so he obviously wasn't with us anyway we were coming right to the end of the walk and the walk finishes um you know once it gets more towards where the harbour is there's gradually 
think there's probably like three benches, but they're in amongst trees and looking out over the harbour, really, really nice. And um, at the very last point, there's a little bench that looks out over the harbour. And um, on the bench, we could see, I mean, it was quite a horrible sort of overcast day and actually it was just blowing up and becoming quite windy. It was obviously about to chuck it down with rain. And um, we could see on the bench that there was something stood on the bench in amongst all the kind of bushes and, you know, reeds and things like that that you get kind of near the harbour. And um, on closer kind of inspection, once we got a bit closer to it, we could see it was a little Christmas tree. And it was probably like, well, it was in a little pot, like a little metal, you know, flower pot, plant pot. Um, and the tree itself was perhaps like 30 inches high, yeah, uh, 30 inches, 30 centimetres, so about, you know, ruler's length in height. And, you know, it was a little Christmas tree sort of... Um, you know, real, real Christmas tree. But it had been decorated, obviously, by the shop or whatever with some white, fluffy stuff to look like snow, you know. And it was wrapped, you know, with cellophane and it had a little Santa on a sort of lollipop stick. So the whole thing, you know, it was quite small and just stood on this bench. It was so sweet and we kind of stopped. You know, like if people have maybe had a car accident and people put flowers by the side of the road, it had that kind of feel about it. So we stopped and said, oh, you know, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Anyway, it had a little card in there. So we pulled the card out to read what the little card said. And the card was what I really meant to bring along to this video. Um, but obviously I haven't. So it was just a little card and it said in there, um, to Sarah, um, you know, much beloved wife, mother and sister, um, you know, taken to us far too soon without warning. Um, you know, you are missed every single day. So it was so, you know, heartwarming and just, oh, just lovely. And then it had all these little sort of someone had drawn stars all around it. And it said, if you should find this tree, um, please take it home and look after it. Um, oh, it's, <laughs> it's making me feel a bit well, well enough just, just saying it. So my son and I had a bit of a moral dilemma because we are not particularly good with plants and we were kind of like, oh my gosh, what should we do? Because if we take that, we're likely to kill it. Um, you know, I mean, obviously we will take the responsibility seriously and we will try, try to look after it. But invariably we are not great with plants and things. So at first we kind of then put it back onto the bench. And then we said, well, hmm bit tricky because a it looked a bit like it was about to rain you know because it was blowing up and getting very windy and things so that you know it could just get completely rained on and you know blown over and kind of washed away which would be horrible and also we just had this kind of feeling that you know the fact that we were the people who found it with the nose and things we were obviously meant to find that and is it slightly disrespectful to then not take it because that person had written that note and put that down there Therefore, you know, we should kind of abide by what that person had said. So we did take it. But yeah, we did stand there for a few minutes kind of saying, oh, what should we do? What should we do? You know, right, I've got this one. I'm going to cut the, the pattern off and do it over this way, I think. So we did take it and um, it's now on the kitchen windowsill. You know, we've read the instructions. It's, it's obviously supposed to be a hardy plant. We're going to leave it indoors until about March um, and then hopefully we can plant it somewhere out in the garden um, because it says to not plant it, you know, whilst there's likely to be frost. So hopefully by leaving it until a bit later in the year, hopefully that will be fine. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that story with you because, oh, it just brought tears to my eyes and I just thought, you know, it was obviously very very sad the sentiment that was behind the gesture um of course was very sad and you know at this time of year it always feels slightly more poignant doesn't it and you know when families get together and things like that there's going to be a gaping hole from you know that lady who's going to be missing um and obviously yeah it did cause us kind of this moral dilemma of what should we do what should we do I hope that you guys, you know, if you comment below, 
I hope you think we did the right thing um, by taking it. You know, we just felt like actually, and also the other thing we said was, imagine if then we walked past it and past the people who had perhaps left it on the bench. Would they then feel quite hurt that we hadn't taken it, that we'd just left it there? So we just felt on all of those base bases or all of those reasons we felt that we had to to take it so I hope that you think that we did the right thing and yeah rest assured it's on our windowsill and we're planning on looking after it so fingers crossed that we do manage to do that but anyway I just wanted to share that story because it was just one of those heartwarming kind of heartwarming things and um yeah just just lovely way to remember somebody and by actually then passing that tree on to someone else because it felt a bit like, you know, you were taking a little piece of their tragedy and turning it into something to be, you know, nourished and cherished. So, yeah, we felt special and privileged to have found that tree. Well, and slightly nervous that we are now responsible for that tree but hopefully that's um hopefully that's all going to end well and it will all be good so i just wanted to share that little story with you because i just thought that was really really nice and really really lovely okay. and my son was um Oh, he was even more touched than I was, I think. So he kind of didn't let go of the plant, you know, <laughs> for like the rest of the day. He held it in the car as we drove back home. And, you know, he obviously was, um, he was the one who put it out on the windowsill and, you know, read all the instructions about how to look after it and things. And obviously he's taken it all very seriously. So, uh, yeah. So I've been giving it some other thought of what else we can be doing in our mass making. So hopefully I've got a few other ideas, um, you know, that will keep us going for a few more weeks before we have to go on to repeats. I mean, as I said last time, you know, I mean, actually the repeats don't really worry me too much anymore because actually, you know, it's good to make more of things if that makes sense because I have now been using a few of my items I mean I've still got tons left if you looked in the box you'd think what's she talking about she's got loads left <laughs> but it's surprising how quickly they can go so um, although I have got loads left they will go quite quickly you know and especially certain types of things things that maybe are your favorite types of embellishments and ephemera pieces to use you know you may find that you run out of much quicker than others so, and I guess there'll always be new people who maybe haven't caught up with this series at all who, um, you know, they may find, you know, be viewing it for the first time and find it quite useful as well, I guess. So, uh, yeah, there is that aspect, which I hadn't really even thought about that, to be honest, until I just was saying it. So, let me just trim this down. So I'm going to try and film a few of these to have them in the bag ready to upload because um, obviously with Christmas, you know, the kids are going to be home and um, my husband will be home between Christmas and New Year as well because they have like a shutdown where he works. So, you know, we'll, um, yeah, we'll all be kind of busy and I don't know how much time there will be for crafting and doing videos so I'm hoping to try and do like quite a few so that at least I can upload my mass making and my challenge videos and things like that so uh, hopefully there'll be things to watch there we go. right and actually whilst I'm on that kind of subject um, just like What's everyone's thoughts? Everyone's thoughts on um, like over the festivities. Like, I'm aware that there are some people who maybe don't have family nearby, and Christmas can be a tough time, you know, of year.
so with those people like the videos still uploaded like say Christmas Eve and you know Christmas Day and things or actually is that you know in poor taste because actually you're busy you know I don't know I don't know what's the what's the correct thing to do um, I mean somehow I've obviously fallen into this like uploading videos almost every day or well, pretty much every day and just every now and then I kind of miss a day so I'm just wondering you know for anyone who maybe you know hasn't got plans for Christmas and things would you be disappointed to not have a video or actually you know for people most people would they be like oh my gosh here she is again uploading a video on Christmas Day now <sighs> I don't know and to be honest I don't even know whether I would manage to film enough videos to put one up on Christmas Day anyway so I'm probably just waffling now um you know completely about something that might or might not even be plausible so mm, just probably ignore me but you know I'm just aware that obviously Christmas isn't the same for everybody and so some people's Christmases you know they might be quite different or they may be you know if you've got a grown-up you know an adult Christmas um you know, your part of your Christmas enjoyment might be having a lovely lay-in, you know, watching watching some YouTube, watching, you know what I mean? Just because um, some people's Christmases are kind of getting up at the crack of dawn because the children are waking up and things, that's not obviously everybody's Christmas, is it? So, yeah. Anyway, I'm waffling and uh, apologies if I have... Um, I don't know, offended anybody or anything else. I don't know, really know where I was going with that, but I was, I think, just trying to find out what the feelings were, whether there were some people who actually, you know, would find that nice to have a video. But as I say, you know, I can't promise that I would actually have even filmed any videos to put up anyway, but... So, probably enough of that. Right, let's count how many we've got and actually check out what the time is. So... Oh, it's only um, 32 minutes, so do you think we're actually getting faster at doing these? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think a lot of you are pretty efficient at doing these anyway, because sometimes in the comments, people have managed to get an incredible amount <laughs> done, and I'm like, wow, you know, because you've all achieved miles more than me. So how's it coming along for everyone with the uh, using up stash and old things, you know, are the mass makings helping to reduce your, your stash of things or not really making much of a dent? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether mine, well, they probably are making a bit of a dent to be fair, but, you know, paper and things has always been a weakness for me, so... Uh, it's going to take a lot more than a few weeks worth of, you know, mass makes to clear my my stash of papers, I think. So But that's fine, you know, that's all good, isn't it? So next week, for next week's mass make, I thought what we could do is um we will make some of my little hand stitched uh fabric ruffles. So I'm giving you a heads up like I was supposed to do with the fabric paper clips that then for some reason oh, I uploaded the videos in the wrong order so there were all these warnings of oh next week don't forget to bring your fabric along and then obviously it wasn't that video at all because that video had been the week before so I know I did say apologies on the title and in the description of that video I wanted to put a banner across the top saying apologies but I couldn't fathom out how to do that for some reason um Anyway, so I do apologise for that mishap. You know, I thought I was so organised, giving you all this heads up, and then flipping, you know, uploaded the videos in the wrong order anyway. So, yeah, I do, do apologise for that. So I'm giving you a heads up now, and hopefully I will get these videos the right way round, and won't actually end up uploading the fabric one <laughs> before this one then that would happen again 
so yeah so next week we will be doing some fabric ruffles so of course that means bring along some fabrics um fabrics and some obviously needle and thread and I mean that's probably all you're going to need to be perfectly honest because um you know that's all that we'll require scissors obviously uh yeah that's that's going to be it so just a bit of hand stitched tiny kind of ruffles so you know fabric remnants really are going to be the thing you see that flap has come out again I know I'm constantly saying this at the moment I'm sure they've changed that glue I'm sure that they have changed that glue if anybody else uses this glue let me know if you think they've changed the formula and it's not sticking as fast as it used to I'm not saying it's not sticking as well because maybe it still is sticking well it's definitely to me doesn't feel like it's sticking in the instant way that it did do previously because I'm pretty sure that that would not have come undone you know and flicked open again as per how it you know how it's always been so let me know if you've had any experience of that and kind of think think that that's the case it's so disappointing when they change things isn't it right let's use that butterfly piece that I've used along here Actually, and I just then spotted some sheet music, so we can do that. So this one, I might just cut this into, into, um, well, not half, but, you know, cut it down widthwise. So cut that down like that. So hold that up there. And fold our flap over like that. Okay, I haven't really been doing many thumb holes, have I? So uh, I think I've not been doing them really because it's a bit awkward then having to put my head in the camera. So I've kind of avoided doing them, but I do like the thumb holes. I think they are really sweet. Okay. I actually don't know what day of the week Christmas is this year. I haven't actually looked. I must have a look. My daughter is being a sheep in the school nativity play so um, yeah looking forward to watching that. She's obviously quite excited for us to watch that. I don't know when this video will go up whether I will have seen her play by the time this goes up. I don't think I will have done. No, I think I will be seeing it the week this video goes up. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing her. But, you know, she's not saying anything. She's, um, but she is singing a song. And um, obviously she will just be there looking really cute. So looking forward to that. Right, uh, this one. Now I'm just wondering whether to use this for another. Or actually I might save this because I've got another... Um, project planned for another week of the mass making so I might save it for that so let's just make one more I think with this paper which is kind of double-sided I don't know about you guys but I always used to love the double-sided paper I mean actually to the point where I would kind of seek it out and if it was single-sided you know to me wasn't as appealing as the double-sided and I would think oh it's only single-sided you know Actually, when it comes to using it, I don't know about you guys, but I actually prefer it when it's single-sided because, um, I mean, other than when it's like this, where it's plain on the back, I often think the patterns are so nice that then I'm literally torn for which side to use. So, uh, yeah, I've actually kind of changed my mind completely and I now prefer the single-sided page pages rather than the double, unless they're plain. You know and then obviously they're better right just 
trim this down here. It's horribly crooked. And I would just do a couple of thumb holes, uh, not, a, not a couple of thumb holes, sorry, just, just one. Okay, sorry about my head again. And then I'm just going to glue that down. So I think, I'll just check the time, because I was going to say, I think we'll decorate one, but what is the time? It's 40 minutes. Oh, let's just quickly do one with the sheet music. Because I wanted to do one with the sheet music, really. So um, let's just quickly grab that sheet music in, which now, where have I put that? There it is, buried. Buried under all the paper that I just moved to the side. So, okay, here we go. Right, make sure that's glued down properly. Oh, it is frustrating when that glue is not so sticking so quickly because, um, you know, it obviously delays you moving on to the next thing. Probably help if I, you know, bulldog clip that at the side. Right, let's just hold that together like that. Okay, so I've got this um, sheet music here. Now, this is vintage sheet music. This is some of that beautiful sheet music that Carol um, very kindly sent me. Uh, when you get vintage sheet music, often <laughs> I like to just do a little test, just as a corner like this, to see how crackable it is. Because sometimes when it's quite old, it's very prone to to cracking and therefore obviously falling apart. But I mean, you can see there, I've folded that back and forth a few times and it's holding together pretty well. I mean, given that this is vintage paper, I'm pretty impressed to be honest. But if you are worried, um, of course you could just double your paper up. So if I just pull in another sheet, for instance here, you know, you could just double the thickness and that way you're you know, you're making it much more robust. Or, of course, you could line it with, um, you know, just regular coffee dyed paper. That also would, you know, thicken it up, to be honest. Um, I'm going to cut this down. I don't want to get rid of that lice um, title, actually. So I'm just going to take that out of the way and bring in a page without the title. In fact, I might as well use these because they're still stuck together. So I'm going to cut it down. Here, like that. Okay. I don't think that's very straight or anything, but never mind. I'm just going to drop it down here, like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring this like roughly where my flap will be, so that I can make sure that I focus my glue like on those folds so I'm literally doing this to thicken this up so that it's um, you know not as flimsy as just a piece of vintage sheet music would ordinarily be if that makes sense so I'm just going to come up here like that oops try and spread that glue around I mean it's not really helping because my glue's not really easing out particularly brilliantly today but never mind so I'll just go to about there because I'm going to probably trim this down at the header as well. And I'm just focusing roughly where I think my fold line might be. So I've got plenty there. And then I'll spread my glue out with my card. Like that. And then we're just going to fold this little flap up. And of course, you could use your um, book page for this too. I mean, the sheet music is great because obviously it tends to be a bit taller than your average book page. So for this type of thing, unless you're making teensy ones, you know, it's quite nice to have a taller piece of paper. But I mean, as you saw with that piece from the 8x8, you know, it doesn't have to be. You can easily make things from smaller smaller pieces. So that's that and then we're going to just fold our flap down like that. So I'm just going to trim that down now just across here 
I mean, of course, obviously it would have been better probably to wait for this to dry glue wise, but you know, again, I mean, when you're doing a video, you just got to, um, you've just got to crack on, haven't you? So, you know, I'll just trim that down there like that. Okie dokie. So there we go. See, that is not very straight along that bottom bit. Okay, right. So that's my piece. You can just obviously do your folds a bit more. And that's still got some of that thread. You know where it was kind of um, bound into the like booklet of sheet music. There we go. And then you can obviously... Um, round your corners and you know do the little finishing touches that you want to do but isn't that lovely you know just so simple and so pretty so right we're at now 46 minutes so I think what I'll do is decorate one up quickly because obviously otherwise you know I won't really have time to kind of realistically decorate one so I do try and keep these to an hour-ish which I know that's incredibly long time still but you know we can achieve then quite a lot. So let's count out how many we've done because we always like to. We always like to do that. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Wow. 16 is brilliant because I think normally we're averaging, when I say we, I mean me. I think a lot of you average more than me, um, you know, which is fantastic. But I think I average about 14. So um, this has been a really good, good session. Now, which one shall we decorate? Let me just have a quick look around my desk and see what bits I've actually got that I'm going to use. Um, hmm, let's have a look. Decisions, decisions. I'm just kind of seeing what types of things I've got. Well, I've got this. This is just sat there. So we could use that. Mm. What do we think? Which one would this go quite nice on? Actually, it goes quite nice on there. Should we do that little sort of stumpy one? Or on here? Let's move these out the way a little bit. Oops, I've got a ticket there that might come in handy as well. So I'm just literally grabbing a couple of things in to, um, to decorate this up with. Did I say this one? Did I say this one or did I say that stumpy one? Literally going mad. Going mad. Right. Oh, that's really pretty. I think we'll do that actually. I'll just move those down there. Got one of Rachel's labels hanging around there. I wonder if we should pop that on somehow as well. It's quite nice, isn't it? So let me just grab in like my scrappy piece of paper. Filthy look where we can ink onto. So we'll just ink all of this up slightly. And I know, really boring, but yes, just just so you all know, I'm still using the walnut stain distress ink, so uh, still persevering with that. I'm actually really liking it now. Not that I didn't like it in the first place, but, you know, it takes a bit of getting used to when you swap colours. But, um, you know, it's quite a nice difference, or quite a nice change from the vintage photo. And, um, yeah, quite like it. So that's that piece. Now, if we were to have one of Rachel's labels, so I just, I mean, these are just things that happen to have been laying around on my desk. So I've just grabbed in, you know, grabbed a couple of bits that were just laying about here. So thinking if we could pop that there, that there and that there maybe. So let's get gluing and 
committing to the bits and pieces. Otherwise, I'll just be here all day, you know, swapping things out. So it's good to just literally go, no, nope, I'm going to go for that now. There we go. Let me stick that on there. Okay. Now this, as you can see, has not been inked up because, um, well, it just hasn't. So I'm going to just ink that up a little bit so it's a little bit grungy as well. Oops, I'm going to pop that on there. I've got the ticket, so I'm going to just ink around the ticket. quite nice isn't it now do we want a word or anything so just pulling my words here uh, we've got journey here perhaps journey would be good as we've got the Eiffel Tower so we'll just tear that down just ink that up there I guess actually like quite nice and then of course you know I don't like having things without a bit of lace so let's just see whether we want maybe the Eiffel Tower on a bit of lace well let's glue our ticket down again because then we're just committed and I can't keep on then change my mind which you know I do just find very helpful when I'm mucking about and not deciding and especially if you're doing a video because I know that <laughs> You know, you don't all want to sit there for hours while I'm just deliberating. So uh, it's very helpful for me to just just go for it and stick it down. I'm not sure that lace is quite right, actually. So I'll just have a look here. Got this strip here. So I could have that with Journey on there. Or Eiffel Tower there quite pretty what do you guys think and then we could obviously finish it off with a bit of bling because why wouldn't we that's quite nice isn't it or we could have a bit of bling on this Eiffel Tower piece that's quite nice isn't it right let's go for that so oh, I've got this three in one glue that's literally you know on its last legs but not quite finished I have got a new one but this has been turned upside down, so hopefully it's going to be, you know, plenty usable now. So just use that like that. Okay. Just pop that there. Now what happened to that tiny weeny piece that I had just now, you know, when we started this? I had a little tiny skinny piece of lace. Just seeing whether I can see it anywhere here because um, it would just fit in this gap. I mean, it was very pathetically small, so I'm not really surprised I can't see it, but I would be surprised if I'd thrown it away because obviously I don't really throw anything away. No, I can't see it in my carrier bag, which contains all my rubbish, so I'm pretty sure I didn't throw it away. Well, it's obviously not going to show itself now for the for the video, is it? It's not going to be helpful. Right, let's pop this lace on down the bottom. Whoa. I don't know what happened to my glue there. Come on. Right, the glue might be now pretty much on its uh, on its last run. I think this might be its absolute last last go ever. Ugh, getting in a bit of a mess there. Okay, which is the right way and the wrong way to the lace. No, like that. So, oops. Come on. Not making a very good job of that either now. Okay. Right, that looks good. Just pop that down like that. And we'll just move that out of the way a little bit. Just 
stab that off. Wish I could find that piece of lace, it's so annoying. Especially because I know that the second that I turn that camera off, I will then spot it. So we've got a little flower we could use. Oh, it's so annoying. Why can I not see it anywhere? Perhaps I put it up there. No. Sorry, it's probably about as interesting as watching paint dry, but mm, I don't know. Right, well, I've got here one of those Martha Stewart butterflies. Just a punched butterfly, so I'll just ink around that. See whether we want that one anywhere. Got the little word here. Like that. Just seeing if that piece of lace has gone under there. No. Oh, here it is. Look, it's gone under my board. Wow, no wonder I had lost that. But ridiculous that I hadn't binned it. Right, so I'm just going to stick that on there. I mean, all that fuss for that little puny piece of lace is just ridiculous, isn't it? But, right, let me use my fresh three in one. Okie dokie, right. Glue that piece on. Oops. Oh. Okay. Just pop that down. Okay. Right. Looking good. I mean, my fingers aren't because they're obviously all gluey, but, you know, happy with what's going on on my piece, so that's all right. So maybe a little bit bling. And then we were going to have that word, which now what has happened to my word? It could be even stuck on my arm. No, or perhaps it was stuck, you know, on my jumper. But no, oops, it's in there. In there. So let's have our word journey down there. Okay. Oh, I nearly stuck it upside down. I'm going to pop that there. I'm going to pop the bling on. just across here okay right looking good now and then I'm going to just pop a butterfly on just here I think it just ties everything together then so that's it a little dab of glue On there. Okay, got there eventually. <laughs> right, let me check the time. Oops, we're at 58 minutes. Lucky I stopped to start decorating when we did. So that's my little decorated piece, and obviously you've got your, you know, your envelope in there. Of course, you could punch a thumb hole in that um, or leave it just as it is. But you know, there's something a little bit different with their obviously longer flaps, which I just think is um, you know, is quite nice. So and then you would obviously, of course, you know, pop your pieces in like that. Uh, I don't think I have a journal page, but I do have, she says, something that would, you know, show you roughly how that would look. So that's how that would look on a page. You know, you could then just, I don't know, pop some doily behind it or something. And that's how that would be on your page. So... Hope that you like them. I hope if you um, crafted along that you managed to get a few done. And um, yeah, I hope that you had fun. I'm going to obviously, as I say, try and film some ahead ready for over the Christmas period and things. And um, yeah, next week we're going to be working with fabric, doing those little fabric um, hand stitch ruffles. So thank you so much for joining me and hopefully you'll uh, join me next week. Thanks very much. Bye.